Welcome back to Fusion Friday. In this week's episode, we are going to take a look at using the computer-aided modeling interface in Fusion 360, or the manufacturing interface. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are going to create this little wooden piece for our CO2 car track with a couple of joints on each side of it so that they could fit together and extend about 60 feet. Now, what the computer aided manufacturing section does in Fusion 360 is it allows us to create tool paths so that if we have a machine like a CNC router, we could tell the machine exactly how to cut this um, shape based on the kind of stock that we have. So by the end of this video, we will have um, our piece of wood able to cut out and then we can visualize exactly what this will look like so that we can send it over to the Shipoko router in the fabrication lab and cut out our pieces out of wood. So let's jump right into how this works. So if we were to create a new design, whenever you're designing something that is meant to be machined out or milled out, you are really gonna to wanna to pay attention to the origin that you start your part at and how you orient your sketches. That'll save you a lot of time later on. So to draw this, I'm gonna start on the top and I wanna draw my piece and I'm gonna imagine that I'm starting with my uh, piece of wood in the bottom left corner. That's where I'm gonna put the origin of my shape. Okay, so to do this, I'm just gonna draw out my rectangle so I want to start with a rectangle. I don't want to go a full two feet, even though we will have, oh, and I just realized we got to make sure that we are in inches when we're doing this. So we'll set our document settings to inches. Okay. And now I'll redraw my rectangle. So I want my rectangle to be um, nine inches wide and 22 and a half inches long. I don't want to go a full two feet because whenever you're using um, a CNC machine, it's always better to have a little bit more stock than you do for your part, just so that way your part doesn't go flying out when you're trying to make those cuts. Okay, now that I've got my 22 and a half by nine inch um, rectangle, I'm just gonna start by adding the um, joints on each side of it. And I'm just gonna do it on one side and then create a rectangular pattern to get it onto the second side. So I'm gonna draw my basic shape just using triangles for now and I'm going to add my dimensions. So these are both two and a half inches on each side. This is an inch and a half. The top of the joint is inch and a half away from the bottom of my stock. And then these joints are at a one inch horizontal slant from each other. So now we've got that fully dimensioned out. And then what we could do is we could just create a rectangular pattern. And what I'm going to do is take, um, my rectangular pattern tool and I want to create, oh, I'm still dimensioning. I want to take my rectangular pattern tool, take all of these lines and then I just want to extend it out. So I want two of these and I want it to extend out until we hit our top of the board there at 21 inches away. And then I'll click OK. And now what I could do is I could come in and I could just trim out these two excess sides here. And I'll trim away that middle portion. Well, actually, I'll just leave it. That way it keeps my dimension fully constrained. Okay, now that I've got it um, sketched out, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and finish the sketch and then extrude this up. Now we're gonna be using half inch plywood here, but half inch plywood is not truly half of an inch. So our plywood is about 0 0.475 inches. So I'll go ahead and just extrude that up. And now we've got our piece. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the little curves for the fillets here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of these inner edges. So I'll need both the back joint and the front joint. I'm just gonna add a fillet. Okay, and I've designed this fillet to be 0 0.28 inches. There was no reasoning behind that. It was an arbitrary choice, but that's what we're rolling with for um, this piece of stock. Okay, last thing we have to do is we actually have to apply a little bit of a tolerance on this back joint. So that way when we um, fit them together, they will actually be able to slide in place and stay in place, but we want to reduce the gap um, as minimally as we can so that there's not a big bump there. So to do that, I'm just going to go up into my modify and click on offset face. 
And then I'm just going to click on all of the back faces of my part. And I'm going to offset them by negative 0.02 inches. Just a teeny tiny bit, but that teeny tiny bit will be enough to get our pieces to fit into each other. And now we have our fully modeled out piece. We can assign a material if we want, but we do not have to for um, the CAM software to work. Now that we've got our model, now is where we would want to go into the manufacturing space. So once we're here, the manufacturing space, it has a bunch of different commands and tools. The only thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to create a setup for a CAM manufacturing process. And then once you have a setup, you can apply any of these 2D operations or 3D operations, depending on what you want them to do. So today we're going to get started by just one of the most basic forms of CNC milling, which is a 2D contour. Okay, but to do this first, we have to set up a piece of stock surrounding our part. So we'll create new setup. We have a naturally defined origin in the center here. We do not want our origin to be in the center. Again, we mentioned before that we want our origin to be in the bottom left corner. So we'll go ahead and we will click on stock point over here on the right side. And we will just move our origin straight over to the center. Now it's also important to make sure which side is your X and which side is your Y axis, because this is gonna be important when you load this into the machine. If you, for some reason, have the, the X and the Y axis is flipped and you go to put your piece of wood in instead of it going um, horizontally like it's shown here, if you were to place the, uh, the piece vertically here, your cut is gonna be not what you want it to be. So you have to be very careful with placing your origin whenever you're using the computer aid and manufacturing space. Okay. And something else I want to do, I also want to make sure that my units are in inches in here. It defaulted to millimeters. So I'm just going to recreate my setup and now I'm in inches. So I'll put my box point back over there. Now, the other thing that I want to do is right now it defaults to have my stock right up to the very edge of my, our part. But again, our stock is going to be slightly larger than the exterior of our part to make sure that it doesn't go flying out when we're trying to make these cuts. So what we have to do is we have to go into our stock option. Instead of it being relative box size, we want a fixed box size. And then we could go ahead and we can add in the exact width, depth, and height of our stock. Okay, so our width, we want to set that to be our two foot... Um, two foot X, and then we have 12 inches of Y in our stock. So now you see that our stock size gets a little bit larger compared to our part that we're going to cut out. And then our height in Z, we also want to make that, since we made our part 0 0.475 tall, we can make our height in our Z direction that for 0 0.475 as well. We are good. So we want to round up to the nearest... 0.005 we do want to keep it precise and we'll say okay something to note it is very important to press okay when you're done creating a setup if you were to just click off of the screen all of those settings that you just made are going to delete so make sure that you click okay when you're done making your setup Okay, now that we've got our setup the next thing that we want to do is we want to start to assign the tool paths Okay, so again, we're going to create a 2D contour for our shape. Now, the first thing that we have to do is we actually have to load in our tool library. Okay, so if I were to select tools, okay, you're going to come up with a screen like this. Now, in your local library, you should see this tab on the left-hand menu. We have to install the Spay Tool Fusion 360 library. Now, Spay Tool is the manufacturer that we get all of our CNC uh, bits from. So we will just have to go ahead and load in the tool geometry so that way Fusion knows exactly how big our tool is that's making these cuts. Okay, so to do this, we will have to go ahead and import the library that you should have downloaded from the OneNote. So we'll find our Spay Tool Fusion library and click open. And now you see we have access to all of these Spay Tool bits, okay? For this operation, we are going to use tool number seven here. 
So all we have to do is click on that tool and then click select. Once you have your tool loaded, we want to go ahead and load the type of wood that we're going to use. This is going to control what's called our speeds and our feeds. The speed rate is how fast our spindle is actually moving as it makes um, a cut through. And our feed rate is how much we are kind of feeding the tool into the bit. So speed is typically measured in um, rotations per minute, whereas our feed rate is usually measured in inches per minute to show how far along we are moving our spindle. Okay, so depending on your tool, depending on your machine, and depending on the material, you're going to have different speeds and feeds for everything. Usually when we're using the um, Shipoko, our softwood options, we don't have to change much in our speed and feed rates. However, if we go to using the Tormach that we have in the fabrication lab, you're going to want to look up um, the exact speed rate and feed rate for um, whatever material you are working with. Okay, so we don't have to change too many settings in here. However, something that we do want to do is we want to make it so that instead of our tool just plunging into our part and then cutting along all the outside surface, we want it to kind of gradually ramp its way down the part. So that way, um, the impact of cutting through an inch and a half of wood doesn't send our piece flying. Because if we don't do it a little bit more gradually, chances are our piece will go flying. So to do this, we want to go over to the passes section. First thing we want to do is go there. And then what we want to do is we want to select multiple depths. Okay, once we do that, it tells our tool, okay, we want to go around this thing a couple of times. And we want to start with a maximum roughness of 0 0.25. Okay, that's really all we have to do. We just have to select that we want our thing to be on multiple depths. And then here in this last tab, this linking tab, we have to tell um, the system that instead of, again, going down that 0.25 inches and then just cutting along that surface, we want it to kind of gradually ramp all the way down. So we have to select this little ramp option. And then once we do that, we should be all set. We shouldn't have to go in and change any of those numbers. However, if you want to, you should be able to. And then the most important thing, we have to actually select where we are doing this. Okay, so to select where we actually do this, this is where we go into our geometry tab. And what we want to do is we want to click on the bottom of our part here. Okay, this will tell Fusion that we want to cut until we get to the bottom of our part, which is exactly what we need. So once we do that, we want to select our geometry tab um, and then click on that bottom edge. And then when we click OK, and again, it's important to click OK or else your toolpath will be lost. So make sure that you're clicking OK. Now you can kind of see we have our little cutout piece right in there. And the reason why we import our tool geometry into Fusion's cam space is because if we don't, what Fusion is going to do is it's just going to detect the edge of our part and plunge the tool straight into that center line. However, if we give it the tool geometry, Fusion is smart enough to be able to calculate that we want to kind of offset it a little bit so we keep the exact dimension of our part. So you see this little red line here is not exactly touching our part, but it's in the middle of the path so that way we creep our geometry that we want. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to just run a simulation just to see if we can spot anything clearly wrong with what our tool is going to do. So if we right click on our setup and then click on simulate, we can click this play button and adjust the speed down here a little bit and we see that our tool is doing exactly what we want it to do. It's kind of ramping down a little bit, it's not cutting all the way through, and it seems to be cutting all of our parts exactly the way that we want them to. So we can go ahead and we can speed that back up a little bit until it cuts all the way through our part. So that's essentially how we get a setup going in Fusion 360, assign a tool that we want our um, CNC milling to actually do, and a tool path. So in this case, the 2D contour, okay? Once you're there, now we can send over our setup. So you want to right click on your setup and then click on post process. Okay, we'll go ahead and we will 
um, keep this the same. We want to name our part something. We'll, we'll call it our Engineering Fusion Friday. And we will name that the same thing. And we'll just also make that name that same thing so that way we can find it. And then if we post process it, we should be able to find it in our computer. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can send this file. This is a G code file, which essentially tells the machine exactly where to go. So we can now send this file to our um, shared folder on the OneDrive, same way you would for a D laser cutter, and then get moving on the actual Shipoko machine.